For years, Amazon warehouse workers like Daniel Olayuola have been speaking up about unsafe conditions and the risk of injury they say they face while churning out millions of packages every day so they can reach Prime member doors in two days or less. Now their claims are being backed up by the most recent industry-wide data, showing Amazon warehouses had far higher injury rates than its competitors in 2021, and leaked internal memos that show a high turnover rate to match. And you're being exploited because they know you're a hard worker. And then once you break down, they're like, oh, well, we got a good six to nine months out of you. You're out of here. And you're, you're literally just used. In response, federal authorities have stepped in, coordinating inspections across seven Amazon warehouses in five states last summer, finding Amazon is failing to keep workers safe. And at every single facility, we found serious hazards that were putting workers at serious risk of bodily harm. The Department of Labor has taken swift, decisive action against Amazon so far this year, issuing citations at all seven warehouses. I want to cry. Workers like Bobby Gosfiner, who needed neck surgery and months in a brace after a conveyor belt malfunctioned at his Amazon warehouse in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's two years of my life. I can't get back. Workers like Lenita Hammonds, who hopes to make it to retirement without further injury to her shoulder. They want me to get my rate up, get my rate up, get my rate up. And Jennifer Crane, who remains on the job with a torn ligament in her wrist. I wear a brace to this day still because it hurts. After like two hours of heavy lifting, I'm taking pain meds. Now, in a rare case of federal cooperation, the Justice Department is also investigating Amazon. Not because they think the company is cooking their profits numbers, but because they think the company might be making false statements about the worker safety crisis. This is extremely unusual. This is the story of some workers who've been hurt, of those who are sticking around to demand better, and what the government and Amazon are doing to answer the call. We've never seen the federal government have such a pointed, intense investigation in such a short period of time at such a large employer all at once. Eric Fruman has been tracking safety in workplaces for nearly 50 years, testifying at multiple congressional hearings, including one about unsafe practices at Amazon in November. As of last year, Amazon caused more serious injuries to warehouse workers than all the rest of, the, of America's warehouses combined. He's the health and safety director at the Strategic Organizing Center, a labor union coalition that represents some 3 million workers. Although Amazon approaches the data differently, when the SOC crunched federal 2022 injury data, it found that while Amazon employed 36% of all U.S. warehouse workers in 2022, it was responsible for 53% of all reported U.S. warehouse injuries. One third of the workers, half the injuries, 25,000 serious injuries a year. 100% turnover in these warehouses. What price is America willing to pay as a community, as a nation, to get one-day delivery, two-day delivery? The coordinated federal inspections at Amazon began last summer, following the release of 2021 Bureau of Labor Statistics data showing Amazon's serious injury rate was 43% higher than the warehouse industry average. The Labor Department's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, found unsafe conditions and ergonomics hazards at seven warehouses in Colorado, Florida, Idaho, Illinois, and New York. OSHA acted on referrals from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, which observed workplace hazards in its own investigations of the facilities. Two more warehouses were cited for safety violations on the state level by Washington's Department of Labor. OSHA also cited Amazon for 14 record-keeping violations, finding it failed to properly report worker injuries and illnesses. Amazon is appealing all the citations. What is most concerning is the scale. We have every reason to believe that the types of processes where we found hazards in these facilities are processes that are used in Amazon facilities across the country. Doug Parker was sworn in as the head of OSHA in 2021. At some of these facilities where we conducted inspections, the rate was high as 12 workers out of every 100. So that's more than 10% of the workforce every year who are receiving injuries on the job that are serious enough that they have to take time away from their jobs. And this isn't a new trend. Since 2016, employers have been required to submit injury reports to OSHA for any facility with at least 20 employees. 
Amazon has consistently reported tens of thousands of workers with injuries every year. Perhaps not surprising for the country's second biggest private employer, with more than 750,000 U.S. warehouse workers. What is surprising is how Amazon's injury rate has remained higher than others in the warehousing and storage category since at least 2019. OSHA calculates injury rates by looking at how many injuries and illnesses occurred for every 200,000 hours worked, the equivalent of 100 employees working full-time for a year. The number OSHA and the SOC use to define serious injuries is the DART rate, cases that involve days away from work, job restriction, or transfer. The most recent industry-wide DART rates are from 2021. The warehousing industry, as an average, in 2021 had a DART rate of 4.7 per 100 workers. In the case of Amazon, that number based just on what they report. So it's almost one and a half times the industry average. While OSHA's 2022 industry totals won't come out until November, Amazon says its DART rate remained largely unchanged at 6.7 per 100 workers. When it comes to injuries of all types, Amazon told CNBC its total warehouse injury rate in 2022 went down 9%, 6.9 per 100 workers from 7.6 in 2021. That's still higher than industry averages and its closest competitor, Walmart. An SOC analysis of total recordable injuries across Walmart and Amazon from 2017 to 2020 found Amazon's injury rate was between double and triple that of Walmart's every year. When it comes to warehouses as a whole, Amazon's total recordable injury rate of 7.6 is nearly 36% higher than the latest industry totals of 5.6 in 2021. Although Amazon told CNBC it prefers to be compared only to warehouses that employ more than 1,000 people. But SOC says in the 2022 facility-level data just released, more than half of Amazon's warehouses reported average annual employment under 1,000 workers. We know that it's affecting thousands of workers, and it's very alarming. Bobby Gosfiner is one of those thousands. CNBC was introduced to him and three current Amazon workers through a variety of workers' rights groups and labor coalitions. Not one human Amazon employee said anything about, hey, Bobby, how are you doing? How, what can we do to help you? Gosfiner was getting off lunch break in December 2020 when a conveyor belt stopped working properly. Totes were all over the place. It, it looked like a tornado came through and they it was just scattered everywhere. He started rushing to get things off the ground so they wouldn't keep piling up. And this went on for a good four and a half hours. My pain started in the middle of my right side of my back because we were twisting, moving, down stacking, up stacking totes um, at, you know, at a rapid pace. I met up with my manager again and I said, hey, I'm, I think I'm hurt. I, I, I probably need to be seen. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, it's He's telling me that it's going to take lots of paperwork, lots of paperwork, lots of paperwork. He's like, you think you can go take some Advil and put some ice on it and come back? And I was like, yeah, sure, I can, I can do that. I, uh, I couldn't move my right arm. I drove home with left hand only. I moved around with my left hand only in my house. I woke up that next morning in pain, very bad pain, about three or four in the morning. And I was like, I can't do this. Gosfiner was diagnosed with a herniated disc. He had surgery five months later and was eventually awarded permanent partial disability as part of his worker comp suit. He can no longer work at Amazon or any other physically strenuous job. I have to live with this injury for the rest of my life. I don't get, I don't get um, royalty for having a plate and four screws in my neck because it could have been prevented. I've had herniated discs in the low back and the pain is excruciating. It's actually hard to communicate to someone who's never felt it, how disabling it is. Biomedical engineering professor Laura Panette has researched occupational ergonomics for some 40 years. She explains the type of musculoskeletal injuries that have Amazon in the federal spotlight. Oh, many of them are back and shoulder injuries, which are exactly what you would expect from jobs where there's a lot of lifting and carrying. There are hand and wrist problems occurring, and those appear to be related to a lot of repetitive gripping of the hands. It was this sharp shooting, like stabbing pain, like somebody had, you know, just cut into that nerve in my wrist. 
Jennifer Crane started at Amazon two years ago to make ends meet when she became a single mom overnight to seven sons after her husband died suddenly of a heart attack. She moved closer to her sister outside St. Louis, and two of her sons took jobs at the same Amazon warehouse a week after she did. And if y'all are coming with me, you gotta have a job. <laughs> Here you go. Not did I not know what we were getting ourselves into at the time. Crane's injury happened in October. She still works at Amazon, packing single item boxes. I had to pack at the rate of 80 packages an hour, no matter how small, how big, how heavy. And I was packing a case of sparkling water repetitively all day, along with dog food and Gatorades. And, but went to pack it, felt, you know, a pain in my wrist. It shot to my elbow, up to my fingertips. Went to the doctor. They put me on flight duty. Took them three weeks to get an MRI that showed a torn ligament. Took me another, like, two weeks to see an orthopedic. He says, it's not work-related. Go back to work. So Amazon sent me back to work, injured, unhealed, and expected to make my rate every day. In response to both Crane and Gosfiner's stories, an Amazon spokesperson responded in part that Amazon worked diligently to accommodate both employees and ensure that they had what they needed, not only to work safely, but also to recover. Any claim to the contrary is false. Crane says a medical professional on site through Amazon's program called Amcare gave her ice and over-the-counter pain meds. But this is the big, huge, huge, huge thing with Amcare at Amazon. They work through, like, the company, and they are very quick to downplay injuries and, you know, give you an ice pack, tell you to sit down for 15, 10 minutes, and go back to work. A worker comp assigned doctor later determined Crane's injury couldn't be tied directly to her work. But their orthopedic doctor says, but there's also arthritis in there. So it's the arthritis in your thumb that... It's the problem, not the torn ligament. It didn't happen at work, it was preconsistent. I'm like, my hand never hurt. I didn't even know I had arthritis in my hand. It had never bothered me until I got injured. Amazon says it has a robust accommodation process, but Crane chose not to further pursue that or workers comp. And it's not just workers casting doubt on Amazon's process for reporting work-related injuries. After its inspections last year, OSHA cited six Amazon warehouses for failing to properly report worker injuries. And now federal prosecutors are getting involved too, asking if Amazon engaged in a fraudulent scheme designed to hide the true number of injuries. The Department of Justice's civil division is looking into whether Amazon executives made false representations to lenders about its safety record to obtain credit, asking Amazon to produce copies of communications and other documents and make several executives available for depositions. In a statement, Amazon told CNBC, we strongly disagree with the allegations and are confident that this process will ultimately show they're unfounded, and said it's expanding the team responsible for record keeping. Beyond warehouses, Amazon says it's making major progress across all worldwide operations, some 1.5 million employees, telling CNBC its total recordable injury rate went down nearly 24% from 2019 to 2022. I don't dispute that their injury rates may have gone down some over a period of time, but they're still not good enough. Regardless of whether an injury was indeed caused by workplace hazards, any employee can file an anonymous complaint with OSHA. In response, OSHA is required by law to send inspectors unannounced to find out what's really going on at the site. These workers were exposed to significant ergonomic hazards. They did not have in place proper procedures to make sure that um, workers were getting help when um, packages were over 50 pounds. Uh, in one facility, I believe it was Florida, we saw uh, materials stacked more than 30 feet high directly where workers were functioning. So there was a likelihood of uh, packages falling over on and injuring these workers. Amazon is appealing the citations, but if they're upheld, it'll have to pay its first ever federal fines for worker musculoskeletal injuries. So far, they total nearly $152,000. The Washington State DOJ fines add an additional 81,000. But Amazon is also one of the world's only companies to reach a trillion dollar valuation. There's no amount of money that the Labor Department can impose as a penalty that's gonna make a difference to a company that runs through billions of dollars a day. What matters is, are they gonna respect the need for their workers to be safe? Amidst federal scrutiny and bad press, Amazon has doubled down on its commitments to do better. It's made similar promises in the past. 
This year, Amazon's promising to spend $550 million on safety initiatives. In his last letter to shareholders as CEO in 2021, Jeff Bezos said he wanted Amazon to become Earth's safest place to work. Soon after, Amazon set a goal of reducing total recordable injury rates 50% by 2025. By the end of 2021, Amazon said it ruled out its Working Well Safety and Injury Prevention Program to all U.S. sites, which includes wellness services and physical, mental, and nutritional support for employees, things like stretching before shifts. Many wellness programs focus on encouraging employees to change their personal behaviors. So these might be uh, stretching your arms and legs before you go to work or having a more nutritious diet, uh, but they, they don't directly address the causes of the injuries in the workplace. Amazon has implemented other changes to directly address hazards. And in 2020, Amazon's injury rate improved from the year before. But when the 2021 data came out last year, Amazon's injury rate had jumped back up. An Amazon spokesperson pointed to the pandemic rush as a reason 2021 injury rates were higher across the warehousing industry as a whole and not just Amazon. In a statement given to CNBC, Amazon said it scaled operations significantly to meet unforeseen demand and deliver essential goods to customers. This meant we onboarded newer, less tenured employees. If this was about a bump in the road because of 2021, then presumably Amazon's going to be able to resolve these issues quickly, and we welcome that. Push over time, the mistakes is going to happen, injuries are going to happen. 60-year-old Lenita Hammonds is one of the workers Amazon hired in 2021. She took a leave of absence in June to have surgery on her left shoulder for an old injury. A couple months after she returned, she says a processing associate threatened to write her up or possibly fire her if she couldn't get her rate back up. When that pain hits me so hard, I can't get that rate up. And since the surgery, my shoulder's not getting any better. We were trying to stick it out for that retirement, which is next year when I turn 62. If any employee is struggling with productivity, Amazon says it offers a lot of coaching opportunities to help. In a statement, Amazon also told CNBC, we have more work to do. It says it employs more than 8,000 safety and health professionals, and in June, it committed to work with the National Safety Council on reducing musculoskeletal injuries by 25% by 2025. MSDs like tendonitis, back strains, sprains, carpal tunnel are the leading type of worker injury far beyond Amazon, impacting nearly one in four people globally. Amazon said some of the ways it's mitigating the risks include job rotations, stretching groups called huddles, regular reminders at employees' workstations about taking breaks, and engineering advancements that reduce the need to twist, bend, or reach. These advancements include things like redesigned ladders and sort conveyors that bring items closer to workers, and height-adjustable tables. Back in Missouri, Crane says those adjustable tables would have helped prevent her wrist injury. Tables had probably been able to adjust. I would have had less strain on my wrist. Robotics are one big addition Amazon's made to alleviate worker strain in some warehouses. Mechanical arms help lift heavy packages or do repetitive tasks, such as lifting and moving containers. Driving units lift and carry inventory to workers, reducing the need for extra steps. Overhead scanners with computer vision are replacing handheld scanners in some warehouses, freeing up both hands for some workers. Amazon also says it's spending $66 million to fit forklifts with collision avoidance technology that uses LiDAR to prevent accidents. For Gosswiener, he wishes he'd spent more time training on the mezzanine level where the conveyor belt malfunction led to his injury. Amazon says Gosswiener did take more than 56 training courses, including on the conveyor belt process. Proper training at every point that that conveyor belt moves product and make sure that those people are using good body mechanics and, um, and the rate is at a steady pace and not a high rate pace. In the last year, Amazon has started evaluating body mechanics and exertion using wearable tech belts or wristbands to make sure employees are doing things like bending and lifting properly. Even as Amazon commits to making improvements, it's also spending significant time and resources to fight back against OSHA's findings, with appeals out for all citations. Unfortunately, in almost the entire country, as long as the company is appealing it, is challenging it, they don't have to fix it. 
So some workers are taking action, trying to organize and form unions, like the one that succeeded a year ago in a Staten Island warehouse. Crane is circulating a petition at her warehouse, asking for a lower pace of work, more breaks, ergonomic changes, and equipment updates. But she says Amazon's high turnover rate is getting in the way of gathering signatures. People can't take it no more and they leave. And as, they, as long as they have new people, they're not gonna, they don't know that they can push back and, you know, stand up for what's right. Turnover rates at Amazon are high, more than double the industry average, according to some reports, with only a third of new hires staying longer than 90 days per leaked internal documents from 2021. Although Amazon says those documents were just drafts. They literally are just going to go and try to find another job because they don't want to deal with this, this constant rat race. The safety is very much backseat to the speed of your work. You have to make sure these rates are met, otherwise you're going to be getting a write-up. Then you're not going to be getting any um, opportunities to switch positions or move up at all. Daniel Olaiwola, who's worked at Amazon since 2017, introduced an unsuccessful resolution at last year's shareholder meeting. It asked Amazon to stop tracking workers' rate of work and time off task, what Amazon now calls idle time. And I was asking for them to end this because of the fact that it is a big contributor to the amount of injuries we get at Amazon's worldwide. I can hands down say that, like, if you're rushing, you're going to make mistakes and someone's going to get hurt. An Amazon spokesperson pointed out that pace of work isn't referenced in any of OSHA's citations. But the Southern District of New York's investigations at six warehouses called out the pace of work as an issue. And three states, New York, California, and Washington, have passed legislation that seeks to curtail the use of productivity quotas in Amazon warehouses. Ola Iwola primarily works driving a forklift through what's called very narrow aisles in his Amazon warehouse in San Antonio, Texas. I could be picking up bed frames, dressers, mirrors, like really heavy items, really oblong, awkward shaped things that could be hanging out of the uh, aisles too, which is a dangerous thing. So like the lowest rate we have is like 22 an hour, meaning you'd have to pick an item every three minutes. Ola Iwola's wife is pregnant with their second child. He also wants to help change Amazon from the inside. He now hosts a podcast called Surviving Scamazon. Why not walk away? Because I have to do it for my kids. I gotta be able to support them. I have bills to pay. I know, why don't I look for another job? Yes, I could do that too. But right now I'm in the fight to try to make it better there for everybody. OSHA says ergonomic investigations are currently underway at 10 more Amazon sites, with broader investigations pending at dozens more. And we're certainly going to be doing follow-up as a result of these inspections to make sure that the, the hazards that we've put Amazon on notice for are addressed. And I would not encourage anybody to work for Amazon. I hate to this day even to order through Amazon because it's so convenient. But every time I look at a box, I think of the process of what went through it and who got hurt in the, in the mix of it.